Well, um, so today we are going to complete this uh, lecture about design principles and theories. Well, we, we covered theories already, so more about principles and a little bit of guidelines, but today we are going to, to cover these. Uh, in this hour and then on Monday uh, we will have the we will start speaking about prototyping and the next step in in the course project also so uh, I said yesterday that there are some principles and we are going to see uh, the eight golden rules of interface design these are these eight here um, that we're going to see one after the other with some examples um, and, and if you look at them, there are some keywords that already we, we met already, like prevent errors. We already discussed a little bit of this. And uh, consistency, right? We, we said consistency is a theory also. And we also speak about memory. And there is a guideline that say, there is a principle that say reduce short-term memory load. So don't have people to remember much things. So let's have a look at uh, one of them. Uh, for each and with some example of where they apply or do not apply uh, in general so right we didn't uh, yet started to fit to think and to speak about graphical user interface and we are still in this a uh, little bit vague and general uh, framework about interface in general uh, for now so the first uh, rule say strive for consistency and if you think about that is what is written here it's something reasonable so similar situation should lead to similar sequence of action so if i do something and then the output is x and if i redo something similar the output should be something similar to x so nothing really um, strange but but still something to to remember this means that if we have let's say an application we should have the same terminology within the application. It's not that in one page we call login and the other page we call sign in. Why changing the name? For no reason at all. Hmm? So same terminology in prompts, menus, help. If you want to explain how a feature works, we will use the same name. And again, this seems uh, simple, but if you pay careful attention, you will meet user interface that has different terminology across the pages because, because of evolution, a long time, etc. And the same things for color, layout, capitalization, fonts, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, again, keep consistent color. If a color means something uh, like blue for primary buttons, that's all the primary buttons should be blue. And for positive action and if the secondary button is gray similar thing you just don't exchange buttons right or if you have the positive action okay done etc on the right on your screen you will always have it on the right it's not that at a certain point you move it on the left for again no reason at all and consistency is good uh, but also exceptions to consistency are good as well when there is a reason to be inconsistent so it should be a very specific reason and limited reasons so if you for instance go on github um, you can see and you go in the setting let's say on a repository you will see a certain level of consistency everything is within boxes with gray or similar um, lines hmm? color red gray and buttons are all the same color except for the danger operation like delete the repository etc that will avoid the consistency they will be in a different color they will be uh, the line will not be uh, gray anymore but will be red the button will not be whatever color they are but they will be red etc this consistency this un inconsistency is actually for dangerous uh, in a way operation and it's an exception to um, get our attention mm -hmm. so it's not any like any other section that has some pros cons and you clearly need to know 
what to do, but it's some destructive operation. So this change in consistency is also highlighting some difference within, uh, some differences from the normal, the typical way of looking at the, um, uh, the situation, the web application, the interface, etc. And here we have an example of, a very local example of uh, consistency that got wrong. What's the problem here in consistency? So what is this, first of all? They updated that, so probably they fixed the consistency. This problem, but they will probably introduce others. But what is this first? To validate the tickets, to recharge the, uh, etc. So what's, well, this is in Italian, so I'm, well, mostly speaking with the people that can read and understand. So what's the problem in consistency is written, is highlighted, right? So if you write an instruction, because they cared to write some instruction, um, they wrote um, recharge, um, a, a key, and press this key, and then uh, use the card and move the card closer to the machine. But if you look, and also they write here twice, just in case you didn't notice here, and, but there is no, there is no button with that label because it's actually called enable title. It's not to recharge. So this is again trivial to fix, right? Why they write, I mean, they didn't speak. So the person that does the, the people that are the uh, embedded system, the, the screen for this didn't speak with the person that did the, uh, the stickers for the machine. They just say, oh, well, it doesn't matter to, to agree on a sentence and just do something different. Also, yeah. But it's a key, so it should be, well, I don't know the destruction, uh, the current destruction, but maybe also. And, and also why you have these two buttons here, you can ask, right? These are useless. Why they are here? And the same thing similar for, so also this label, this button, which is this button is, well, now there is one lighted, but it could be also the other one because they are actually, if you look at the picture and the form, it's, it's the same button. So why you have two buttons? So maybe during the day you don't see the light and you can, and since there is no Ricarica, there is only another title, you can press all of them. And also, uh, the other one for getting information is actually different from the... Then eventually you figure out how to use it, but some people touch the screen, some people touch random buttons until something happens and maybe they are successfully in their task to uh, activating or charging the, the tickets or the series of tickets. So this is a problem with internal consistency in a user interface, because this is a user interface, and with the instruction of that user interface, the help part of the user interface. So, again, simple things, but if you deploy it, something like this on large scale in all the city, that probably is not so simple if they made it wrong, right? Oh, and then elevators. Elevators are, are fun. Um, so you can have internal consistency where the help is different from the screen and then it's two people or two groups of people that don't speak each other and then may happen, bad communication. And, and also the person who go to install this or to approve the order for one million of this machine didn't notice that actually the things were different, but you know, maybe they happens, but um, elevators are better. So, Look at this, and we have four or five examples of elevators, and we have also, we will also uh, all shame and fame for the elevators, because they really people loves inconsistency with elevators. So, and this is not an internal inconsistency, it's a consistency with the mental model of a person. So this is simple, in a way, consistency. So, what's the problem here?
Yeah, there is minus 1, then there is s, and then there is r, and then there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is r and s, s, who knows? But this is, again, maybe there is a reason, and s, say, for something underground, but also minus 1 is underground, actually. So, but maybe there is a reason. So still, a little bit of inconsistency, if you think, you need to think. I need to go to the third floor, well, it's three, probably. I need to go to the ground floor. It's R or S. It's probably not minus one, but you know, you can try, and then there are stairs in any way. This is nicer. They get creative here for, so, any explanation of how these things will work. So there is the ground floor that is zero, and then on the left, you have number one, and, sorry, you have number minus one, and then on the top you have one, then two on the right, and then four on top of one, and then three on the left, and five on top of four. Any idea of how this, why this disposition of buttons? I always listen to one explanation that is wrong, but I would like to see if also this happened. Yeah, that is the explanation they always listen that is wrong. You know, you have two doors, one on the left and one on the right, and so you say, okay, uh, minus one open on the left, two open on the right, three open on the left, and five on the top, where it is open. And, and four and zero, and one, I mean, and in this case, no, there was just one door also, so actually it's not even that the case. Okay, and then people get even more creative these are actu actually elevator, right? Things that was installed in actual places. Um, so, where to start? So, which is the probability you make an error selecting uh, a specific floor here? And it's tremendous error, like going from nine to minus nine, and then is it really minus 12 floors underground? So it's, it's uh, 10 floors on the top and minus 12 under. And also the order, like 1 minus 2, 2. And then minus 3. Oh, wait, you don't have a third floor? They just skipped that? They didn't like it? Minus 1. Oh, also minus 1 is missing. Yes, you go to 1 to minus 2 directly. And then... Um, there is no, not even zero or ground floor. But this is actually uh, an elevator. So someone designed that in that way and built that and installed it in an actual building. So, you know, again, again, consistency seems, well, it's trivial, but actually it doesn't seem so trivial for everybody. Uh, and I think that I have stopped with uh, elevators, um, but this is consistency with, well, this is huge consistency problem with mental model of people, but these are all realistic case. Hmm? So this is maybe difficult to have in a graphical user interface and a user interface, but this is kind of exemplar for the consistency of task, of action, of processes that a person has in its mind. We talked about mental model yesterday, so the figure, the the idea of how something works and then how actually something is presented to be working. And everybody has a mental model of how an elevator works, right? You press a button and the elevator goes to the, the floor, in most cases, or often, right? Uh, but then you have something like this and you have to think, okay, what, what, what I need to do? What is minus 12? Is real minus 12? It's a bunker, basically. It's a very deep bunker. Um, so consistency, internal consistency, like in the case of the GDT machine, uh, consistency with mental model and consistency also of interpretation. This one is way more probable on digital application. So in this case, which is, if you just see that for the first time, like you are, 
which one is the selected option? Are you saying ordering by now or by later? Which is the enabled one? Opinions, right? I can say no now and that day can say later because it's not clear. You can maybe understand if you see the rest of the page and if you try clicking here and there and things change and you may, may understand but still it's something you see and you need to ask yourself okay but how it's working I need to click here and interpret the results according to what I'm seeing so also this is consistency consistency of interpretation not within the page but also maybe within the page but within uh, across what other buttons like this work in general I'm used to see some kind of working and now this is different so this is color code is ambiguous there is no internal queue no no reference here that tell me something like it's selecting this or that one there is no external queue in this moment but maybe there are in the page and also this kind is represent the current status so I'm seeing let's say that is now selected so I'm seeing the one that I'm selecting or if I click on now I'm see it, the page change to show me the now but now I'm seeing the later mm? so it's ambiguity in colors but also it's representing the current status or the status I want to achieve which is the right one well maybe if we look at the entire page we can have some more information about that but even if we have more information about this we will have no information about the codes so there is ambiguity there is something that people need to think about and if people are in a rush or in a bad mood or they need to do this quickly because something happens in their life this is just bad uh, usability mm -hmm. and we in general we are used to assume that people will be calm in front of a computer doing things we, when we develop or design something but maybe they are running, they have some bags in hand, they're using the smartphone under the rain. So situations are really different. Uh, and so we need to, to think more broadly about how people use such system. Uh, here, as you see, the example of GitHub, right? So if you go in the option on GitHub, as I mentioned before, all the sections are like a title and then there is a box that is gray and all the buttons, all the color are the same, except for the danger zone. So if you scroll this page, you always see title, gray box, title, gray box, etc. until you arrive at a point where there is a title and then not a gray box, there is a red box. And the buttons are not written in black on the gray, light gray color, but they're written in red. So differently, from this. So this is inconsistency made on purpose to draw attention. So if you look at this page quickly or for the first time, you will immediately notice that this is different from the rest. And then you need to go deeper to maybe read, to understand what's going on. But at the first sight, you immediately see that this part is different from everything else. And it's almost instinctive. Hmm? So consistency is good to avoid problem like this and this but in some cases a little bit of a deliberate deliberate inconsistency is also helpful to uh, avoid problem to get the tension on some specific point that otherwise the risk to be more dangerous like in this case deleting everything or they need to pay more attention than just clicking next 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 in a user interface and this was the first rule. The second rule is cater to universal usability. Um, this is something in a way that we, um, we covered with need finding, that right? people have different needs. And when you, we selected some people, we selected some needs, so we uh, restrict our uh, population and our domain of working for the project, for instance, but in general, uh, people have within also population different needs and the interface should be the one that adapt and the content as well. And the differences could be a lot. It could be first timers of your user interface, could be the very expert 
person of the interface. Think of the first year student at Politecnico using the website versus you, maybe after five years here. And you know the tricks, you know what's working, you know what's not working, you know what to do some things and not to do other things. But the first timer, the one that just enrolled or just arrived from the Erasmus or from another country will have more barrier than you that have five year experience with the same piece of technology, terminology, etc. So expert versus novices. Uh, if you pick a large population, young versus elderly, but also technologically, the web has its own languages and its own way to present things that are slightly different from what you have on mobile, right? Most of the website has navigation on the top, for instance, but most of the mobile application has navigation on the bottom. So there is also a difference whether you use that if you want to adapt to the device. And then there is people with disabilities. Hmm? So blind people, difficult of hearing, uh, temporary disabilities, et cetera, et cetera, that still uh, add um, challenges to our specific design. And then there are international and cultural variation. What, what is one thing you can think of international variation if you have, a, let's say, website with mostly text? What is one thing if you want to scale internationally with this application? Translating the text clearly, what is one thing you need to change in how the application work? Yeah. Some languages are written from left to right and other languages are written from right to left. So the text need to shift, but also the elements need to shift. So if for us the home page of our web application is top left, for that language is top right. And so everything needs to change. So the layout needs to change and to adapt to respect the specific uh, international culture and uh, cultural variation for that. What is used to, what those people are used to, because all the applications are, ma are made in that way or should be made in that way. So universal usability, think that there are several needs, permanent or not permanent, and if you want to scale internationally, there are things that need to change and the interface should adapt. And no example here. The third rule say that provide informative feedback. So the rules say that for every, and notice every is bold and with two asterisks, for every human action should be a feedback of some sort. Clearly, you don't have to provide a long message for every action that the person does. That will be not appropriate. But you still need some kind of feedback. So for frequent and minor action, the feedback should be clearly light, not a message to say, oh, you have click a button, right? Uh, in frequent and major action, stronger feedback. And this feedback can be done using the visual representation of the object that show the changes. So how do you know that you clicked successfully a button, for instance? The button is alighted or the button go, go down a little bit, depends of the, uh, of the kind of, if it is like in 3D, it's, go, it's like pressed. And if you want to delete something, if you want to delete your profile on the, on the university at all, just enough. I just want to leave, I want to delete everything. What would be that the feedback for that? You can imagine. So yeah, but before the pages refresh, maybe they will tell you, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> they want to delete everything because it is a major action, it's infrequent, right? So the feedback should be stronger. Are you sure that you want to delete everything and leave? It will not just be the button pr pressed, right? So different actions provide different feedbacks as according to the difficulty, to the frequency, and to the action, the feedback will be different. Speaking of which, uh, and the feedback is, sh should not just be um, appropriate, but also should be meaningful. Um, and we will see that also in the examples. So this feedback is actual, actually Useless. What is telling you this feedback? 
that there was a problem. Wonderful. And which are the next steps? What you can do now? Refresh the page and try again. Maybe you're lucky the second time. So the message is actually useless because say, oh, there is a problem sending the message. Or, yes, thank you, I noticed already. And then there is a very, very helpful minus one that is extremely helpful and needed. Uh, and there is, well, there is a close button. You can close this, uh, this pop-up. And what else? Yeah, you can refresh the page. You can try again. But what's the problem? What's the technical problem? What's uh, that I forgot some field? If I try again, I will have the problem again or not? Maybe it's actually the service that is down. And so for one hour, and so I, I cannot, even if I try, I need to wait one hour. So who is responsible for this problem? It's a shorter problem. Should I contact someone to fix the problem or not? This message doesn't say any of that. It leaves to you, to your experience, to decide what to do. If to close and go do something else, or to refresh the page, or to write an email to someone, or to make a screenshot to put it on a slide. It's just up to you. This was actually sending a, a message through the portale to students that it didn't work, but after closing and trying again, it worked. So who knows what, which was the problem specifically. Um, this is another example of feedback. In this, in this way, it's a positive way, right? So you know what is this, right? Yes. What is? Um, what is? Um, is the installer of Visual Studio Code? Yes, we, we can stay specific in this case. This is the installer of Visual Studio Code. And the, the normal installer that you download. So if you use it on a Windows computer um, and you try to run it as administrator, um, so for all the users, not just for the current user logged in, it will actually tell you that it cannot proceed. It cannot proceed because the installer is the user installer that is made for being installed on a single user, the current user, not as an admin. So I cannot proceed, I cannot install this. But it's, it's long, but it's also informative because say, okay, if you want to run this as an administrator for real, you just need to go here and download the system installer. So it gives you not only the error, you cannot install it because this is a user installer, not the system installer, but it also tells you how to solve this if you want to do it as administrator, pick another installer and give you the address to pick another installer. And then also as a question, are you sure you want to continue? And you can probably continue with not administrator rights, or you can say cancel and download the right version and run as administrator and that in that case work. Hmm? So this is an example of feedback that gives you all the information you need. You cannot do that. Why you cannot do that? Because it's the user, user installer. What you can do after, you can download it, or if it was a mistake, you can continue. You have all the options. There is no missing information that blocks you, or have you guess what I'm doing now? I'm refreshing the page, or I'm just quitting, and try again, double click again. There is no uh, guessing here. It's precise information, precise feedback. In a very specific case, clearly. If you double click on it without administrator right, it just install the application without problem. Um, fourth rule. Design dialogues to hide closure. Hmm? So every dialogue, every sequence of action should have a beginning, an end, and a development in the middle. So it should be clear when you have done with some process. It should be clear where, at which step you are in some process. It should be clear which is the starting point of this process. Uh, and so you need to also provide a clear feedback again at the end this clear feedback is satisfying the person, is telling the person, you had a goal, you had a task, and you completed it. Congratulations. And also, it's 
not only satisfying and giving the feedback to the person that the task is actually completed successfully, so there is no more work on that task, but also deleted the current task from the working memory, so the, for, so the short term memory of the person, so that the person can prepare for the next task, hmm? for the next action on a web interface, on a computer, on whatever system they're using. Hmm? So, consistency, universal usability, feedback, and dialogues that has a closure in the end, including feedbacks. Um, so, let's have a look at this. Um, so, this is uh, something about uh, the ADISU benefits. Um, what's the problem here in this sense, in the sense of closure? So it's a warning, since you are declared to be uh, enrolled in 2017-28 and you are asking the benefits for the seventh semester, you can add the request also for the first year of the, the master degree. Are you interested? Yes, no. except that I have no idea what they are speaking about, but let's ignore that for a moment. What's the next action? Immediately you have to select the yes or no, clearly, and then? What is missing? There is no button at all, yes. There is no next, okay, previous. There's also no way to go back. Right, he, you are in a session that will expire in, so in a, in a request that will expire in 66 days. Uh, so more than two months. And so probably you have two months to, to decide what to do. But then after you select yes, what's, or no, what's happening? If you look at this, you don't know. There is no closure, there is no cue on what's happening. Maybe after you select yes, a button will appear. Or maybe after you select yes, the page will disappear and we'll go to the next page. And so what happens if I want to change my mind? If I select yes, but it was a mistake, so I wanted to select no. There is no way to go back. So again, asking why, again, and again, it's not rocket science, it's actually probably a button next and previous, simple things. But again, also this is something that is deployed for I don't know how many students there are in Piedmont, but not few. And, and nobody checked this. So someone designed this page, someone programmed this page, someone deployed this page, someone tested this page, and nobody noticed that, that a button was missing. Uh, prevent errors. Um, so, More important that explaining the errors, the giving feedback, because errors may happen, it's not that they won't. Uh, the guide, the, the principles say, in some cases, it's better to prevent the error to apply at all. Hmm? So if there is a menu item that should not be enabled, because it can give you an error, you can disable it. Same as button or a link. So if things are in the page, because they need to remain in the page or in the application, but you cannot use it because it will give you a wrong outcome, will give you, a, will quit from a procedure that shouldn't, or will give an error, just why not disable it? Instead of having the person click on the button and say, oh, you cannot use it now. Just avoid me the click in the first place. Hmm? And prevent errors apply to graphical elements, but also characters. So if I'm asking you for the, um, the, the your birthday, uh, I should allow a letter in the field. If you are asking you a date, eight digits, month, day, and year. Should a letter, a word, be inserted? Yes or no? No. 
So this is preventing error. So the fields about a date is a, a date field. Well, it's not a text, a free text field. So I can only insert dates. Hmm? And when it's not possible to prevent the error, offer simple, constructive, and specific instruction for recovery. I fill out a form. There are 10 fields. Maybe I just made one error in one of that for whatever reason. And option one, I have the person re-enter all the 10 fields. Option two, I will preserve the nine fields that are okay and I will just highlight that there is one field that is wrong and explain how to solve it. So option two is the one that is say here, instruction for repair specifically on the faulty part, on the error part. An error generally should not alter the entire application state or if they do, uh, should make it easy to restore the current state of the application. So if you get an error, it's not that you just have to close everything and start again. Hmm? But it should be easy to go back to where you were before the error. And here there is an example, again, another real example uh, that, that happens. So yet again, only for Italian speakers and readers. Uh, so what is saying this? Well, someone can translate in English, just not me. What this is about is about a sort of admin area, a um, login only area. Okay, so it's asked for a username and password, and it's a button that says login, and then there is a warning here that says. If. Yes, if the, the fiscal code, if the username is the fiscal code, then you have to insert all of them in uppercase. So what's the problem here? You shouldn't allow lowercase, but also what you can do even better. Why? I mean, how difficult it is to get a string and make it uppercase in programming? Like half nanosecond, nanoseconds? It's like two upper or whatever is the command in the language. So why are, are they bothering a person to write capital letters when it's the software that can automatically move from lower to uppercase? You insert in whatever case you want and it will get it capital that will also prevent errors in the database and to, they still need to check this right because if I insert lowercase it's not, it's not going to work so I still need to check if it's lowercase or not in some level so it's I'm still doing the work as a developer but I'm also asking people to, to read and to remember just something that I can do in one millisecond and the other thing that is missing here is not about errors is uh, if the username is not the fiscal code, what is? Who knows? <laughs> so if it's a fiscal code, you have to insert in capital letter. And if it's not a fiscal code, you have to remember what is. If it's an email, if it's, who knows? No queue here. And so then if you forget the password, you can click here and we will see that it's terrible actually. Links should never be one word only. Uh, and also here, here is also capital for whatever reason, because red was not enough. And then there is another nice question. If, if you are a healthcare professionist, then sign up here. Same question as before. And if I'm not a healthcare professionist, should I not sign up? So this is not for me. There will be someone else that will sign up me. Register me to this application. This, this real application is actually not telling us anything about this. It's just ask, having asked us a question or try randomly to put some username and password until it works. So wasting everybody time for, we have seen apparently no reason because to bring something capital to not capital is actually really trivial. And 
write sentences of more comprehensive ways also extremely trivial just to replace the text you have with other text you can have hmm? so again and also this is a real thing is not to make up sixth rule permit easy reversal of action so every action in theory should be reversible even at the cost of extra development effort because the reversing action relieve anxiety and encourage exploration like we said yesterday for the uh, direct manipulation it's a lot of exploration so it's less um, it's less anxiety and people are free to move and also to learn how to use something hmm? so there is not the worry of oh i'm doing this and i'm worried to break everything no i can't do that because i can go back so which is the single most probably known way to go back from an action that you probably all have seen or experienced there's one single couple actually of buttons in some application that will allow you to yeah control z that is going to z that is also the the, the undo button either in word or other tools you have the undo and the redo buttons hmm? at minimum and uh, some, some, of you, some of you ever use Photoshop or tools like that? No? Yes? One person? Two people? Three people? Okay. So in Photoshop or, or similar tools, you also have the extended version of that. You have the history. And so you can go back in the history. So you do an action, you do another action, you do a third action. And then if you want to revert, to go back to, to action before, you can go easily. You just click on a list of the history of the actions and you can go back and so you can do something you can change let's say the colors and you say no this is a, was a terrible idea i can easily go back not just one step but two or three steps hmm? so actions should be reversible in some cases word processor um, office platform or a, a software like photoshop is well done in other system is missing is still missing how do you go back when you send an email you typically cannot on the send the send right or how do you go back if you well if you send a message on, a, on whatsapp or telegram you can delete it right but, but still you, it's not really a reverse it's like deleting and rewriting but that's a level of action to be reversible you can do something i did an action i will I want to revert that action so i can delete it and rewrite i can click undo i can navigate to the history i can do something and it it also hears the okay i, I did it wrong or i can edit it hmm, etc and so and there are clearly different level of reversibility so a single action like the undo and then there is a data entry task i inserted some task and i want to go back or to go to the previous version etc and also a complete group of actions so there could be some different things but always action should be reversible hmm, to go back so not to be worried of making things permanently wrong um, keep user in control the interface should always respond to user action in many ways again provide undo redo that is easy reversal of action because i am in control if i come back and redo things if I can cancel and conf confirm, I am in control. I can select and can decide when I go back, I confirm, I cancel. Uh, it minimizes the tedious and lengthy task and also avoids surprises or changes in familiar behavior because I am, again, familiar with it, I am in control. And here there is an example, uh, again from Polytechnico, because why not? Um, this is the what was this it was um, a questionnaire we received as teacher when we did the um, uh, exams during COVID time for the platforms and what's the problem here that again it's in Italian because
Yes, I can con in the same time not have any problem and add a lot of problem. So I can have all options, right? So this is a bad use of the, I, I'm not in control. I can, I can say multiple things. It's not, there is no clarity. So I can say, I don't have problem. And in the same time, I uh, don't have hardware and software. So I have problems. So how can I both contempt in the same moment, have problem, not have problems. I can select all of them, right? So this is not only a, a, um, um, a question that is not well uh, posed, because the question is, which problem did you add in the exam uh, things? And the first answer is, I didn't. So maybe there was done differently. And um, some are big, you like environmental problem, OK? Um, and something like this. And uh, exam organization, actually, I'm the teacher. Why should I have a problem with the exam organization? I should know the exam organization, right? So anyway, but clearly there is the, the technical part about the organization of the exam, but also the modality, it should be something I decided, right? So I should know. And if I had a problem with my modality, that's another kind of issue. Um, and so this also gives you, you know, wrong information, because if I fill out this form in this way, and you are Polytechnic Administration, you receive this reply, and you want to say, oh, how many teachers had problem? Well, this is actually a, a qu an answer to throw away, because it's, meaningful, it's meaningless. It get, doesn't give any answer if I had problem or not because of this. And if I am just disattentive, I can select multiple these and not notice that I select both, I don't have problem and I had one. Hmm? So this is an example of something um, that clearly is not keeping me really in control and also is, uh, it gives me choice clearly, right? I can, I can select multi, mu multiple of these and so I have choices, but I'm not, I can make mistakes, it's not preventing me to do mistakes, to do, not to do errors, not preventing errors, etc., etc. And the last one is reduce, reduce short-term memory load. So as we said, as a rule of thumb, people can remember seven plus minus two chunks of information. We have said that yesterday. Um, so don't ask people to remember more than five things because they probably won't. And remember across an application, across one page or the other, right? So information on screen should not be needed in the next screen, remember it. So if I insert something in the first page, I shouldn't go in the next page, and the system should ask me what I've inserted before. Uh, or if I selected something before, because it's something I need to remember. This also means that um, I shouldn't, or I should have a way to have entry of phone numbers from the other's book, instead of having person, people inserting directly. Why not open the address book that there is on a computer, hmm? the contacts? Um, or when I'm on a website and I'm looking for something that is uh, um, geographically, I need a location in a place, maybe you can have the option to uh, identify where you are if you want. Hmm? That is one thing that many application and website does. Hmm? So I can say, okay, I want to, to look at the places where I am, or closer where I am, and it's referenced to my location. So I can say that, uh, instead of saying, oh, insert here your city, and insert here your um, postal number, and insert here your address, etc., etc. Uh, fit long forms in a single page. So instead of having five pages in a form, why not having the critical information, the connected information, in one single page? So that if you need to remember something, you can just scroll up instead of pressing next before or then I don't remember what I answered to question number three. So I need to go back and check and then next again. And what if I made an error? I need to go back, etc. So uh, typically to reduce short term memory, if you have a form in a single page is typically better with some exception. Um, so. Again, this is actually a, a point of discussion. Uh, what is this? 
the Google login, right? And how the login, Google logins work? So, so the Google logins doesn't work like this, right? It doesn't have username and password and then a button. What it has? Yeah, you insert the, let's say, username and then press next and then you insert the password. So this is, is this actually in contradiction to reduce short-term memory? Because I, I need to remember what I've written here to insert the right password. So if I've written here name dot surname at, so address one at gmail.com, I should insert here the password of address one. But if I have multiple Gmail accounts, I should remember the password of the other. And I should remember which information I put here. So apparently, this is in contrast with the rule. Mm -hmm. Yes, they made it, in, say, smartly and say, yes, there is the problem of remembering. So how can we solve the problem? Well, we can show it so that you know. And if you click on the arrow, you can also probably go back because there is no back button here. So in contradiction to what we said, there is no way to go back. Actually, there is. It's just not a button, but it's clicking here and you can change the email address. Why they do that? Why they cannot have a, you know, email and password like 90% of other websites? There is a reason. It's a very specific reason. So yes, you, you insert here an email that is not uh, a Google account, and then you will not go here, but it will go to another page that say you, you don't have an account, and so there is a branch here that goes to another. Uh, so it's, it's a check to help you, in a way, to, um, I imagine, I, I never tried, but I imagine that there could be uh, one thing. I insert an email, there is no email associated or phone number associated with a Google account and they go in a page and tell me you have to register. Please start here the registration. So a shortcut instead of asking the username and password. And there is another reason actually. That could be one reason. I never checked, but that could be reasonable. Yeah, sometimes it logs in automatic without a password because reasons. Another reason there is. The other reason, that is the one I'm mostly sure, is that actually this is the same. So Google has the Google Suite, that the free one that you can have at, dot, at gmail.com account but they also sell or give the Google Suite to universities, to companies that can have their own version of Gmail, of Calendar, etc. So the, uh, the Western Piedmont University for the students and teacher email uses Google. So it's, it's Gmail, it looks like Gmail, but it's not the at Gmail address is the at uniupo.it address. Hmm? So, but this sign-in is the same. You start from the same place. So if you insert a Gmail address, you go here. If you insert an email that doesn't have an account, you probably go to the registering. But if you insert the name.surname at uniupo.it, you will go here in this page, but this page or a similar page will be the one hosted by the university and not by the general Google service. So when you insert the password here, you insert the password for Gmail on the Google server, on the general, let's say, Google server. 
but when you log in here with an institutional account, with an organizational account, the password is not checked with Google, clearly, hopefully, but it's checked with the organization. So when I log in with my account, let's say on at uniupo.it, that password will be checked against the version of the software that is running at the university and not with the one that is so it's a different server it's a different set of services that will provide an answer so it's also say in a way security or routing reasons to to have the password only visible to the actual organization that hosts the account hmm? so they could have done it in many ways but this is one and actually if you so we have here we don't use google but we use outlook uh, for for teachers and microsoft has basically the same mechanism you insert the password and if it's the email yeah, if the email is at outlook.com you go and log in on the microsoft server but if the password the email is at polito.it you will not even redirect on something like this but you will automatically redirect to the polito page the same that they use similar to the one you see when you log in to the portale with the email pre-filled and there you insert the password so it's actually on the polytechnic website again so it's shift this and this field separate allow this distinction so it's a technical problem solved in this way and it's avoid the problem of remembering with this in this case with this label here in which you can see the gmail address you have and also the name if you just have multiple addresses or multiple names, maybe you want one for the company, one for personal, etc., you also have a double check that is the account name that is associated with the address. Okay. Um, and then there's another exception. So sometimes entering is better than selecting. Uh, this, as you can see, is still. So a few years ago, some students uh, wrote on some groups that this is called human-computer interaction because complaining about the Polytechnic website was too long. Um, and, and this was actually another, well, we will meet a few examples. Um, so this was an example of a of service. So you have to insert the, the score of your Cambridge first certificate in English, and they had the wonderful idea to uh, select, to write actually all the scores. All, all of that from one to whatever is the maximum and so you can select if you want 178 77 76 it's just one different line um, so so while selecting from a closed list is typically better for many reasons so if you want to select a city you can select on a restricted number of cities but when you have an endless more than 100 or 200 in this case because then there is also from 2015 and before 2015 so there are also exceptions in that uh, you it becomes actually a problem you don't feel anymore in control it's easy to make a mistake because there are many many voices that are actually identical if not for a single character etc 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 so how can we make this better not with this long list options write the score select the exam and then so in this case cambridge first so maybe there are three or four x selection and then write the score but then you need to validate the score right we said because if you if i enter hello instead of 178 i still have the problem and then there are things like well well let's avoid the before and after but another option that could be one option and then there is the extra validation part another option well first of all restructuring a little bit the list but let's imagine that as done Have you ever seen this field that are um, selectable? So you can have an option, but you can type something and the 
you know, like you, when you search on, on Google, you start writing and then option appears, right? So that could be a way I start writing first certificate and then only the option and then I continue B and only the option about B, then restructuring these a little bit because otherwise it would still be a problem. But maybe yes, I write 178 and then just the option with 178 appear and so I can select from a shorter list. That is another option. It's a mix between selecting and entering. Um, and then if we just briefly look at the other, other Zen principle, like this one from Binion, uh, you will, we are not going to see them in detail, but you see that there are things that are really common with the other principle we have seen, like consistency. We found again consistency. Uh, familiarity. Is another one use language symbol that we found that as, as well uh, visibility of the system status is something we will see affordances all the discussion about doors we had um, and we, we already had uh, and then in this principle there are principles about effectiveness so feedback again so all this principle more or less since the build and the theory has many points in common uh, without going into the tale of this, like control, again, is keeping people in control of their, of their system. Um, so let's have a look at this other one that is very, very nice. So what happens here? What they should do first? Or what happened next? So the first bar, let's say I accept the evaluation and confirm my willingness to do the internal shift movement from probably one degree to another. And the other one is I want to cancel my request. And then there is a confirm button and then there is a next, uh, back and next. So what I should do here, let's say that I want to accept the evaluation and move from Computer engineer to whatever. Mechanical engineer, why not? What I should do now? Press confirm, press next. Confirm. And what happens after the confirm? Because here, if you cancel the, the request, you will have 50 euro uh, as, as debit. So it will be automatic, it will be, I will have the chance to see it. I can pay it immediately or I will need to pay it later when I pay taxes. What's going on? Again, there is a problem with navigation because all these buttons are possible. So if I click next, I don't confirm, but I selected this, so it's not clear. And it's also control what I need to do, what's happened next. I, I don't have full control in the sense of the situation. Um, so Norman uh, had seven principles to transform a difficult operation, let's not call it task, let's say difficult operation, simple one, that could be useful, and they can map the principle we've seen in, in, a, in a way. So the first one is use both knowledge in the world and knowledge in the head. So knowledge in the world are like standards mm, uh, that we have. And also knowledge specific to the person, to the specific context, etc. So do you know the menu on mobile, mobile website, mobile application with the three lines? Do you know it's called? The hamburger menu, yes because a burger, there's two slices of, of bread and then there is the part in the middle. So that is terrible under many perspectives from a usability standpoint, but it is so common that you don't have any more to explain that if you click there, there is a menu behind because it's, it's knowledge in the world. You have seen it, experimented it so many times now that if you use it, you don't have to explain it to anybody. It's so common. Hmm? to everybody. So this is knowledge in the world. It's standard, standard de facto. It's so used, even if it's good or not, but it's so used that 
you don't have to explain or is not giving surprise or not generating question in people uh, simplify the structure of task so simple things make things visible so visibility of the state which page i am i am step four of nine or not i am in the end of the process etc visibility what i can click what i can tap what i can do hmm? uh, getting the mapping right hmm? between the words or within the application so this button is related to this text and this other button is not etc uh, exploit the power constraint both natural and artificial again what we we can have or we can learn from the natural world uh, don't forget errors so design for errors may, errors will happen so prevent them or be ready to to tackle them and when all else fall, fall fails standardize so revert to the usual thing the standard things like the menu for for the button or if you're doing a mobile application then the navigation will be probably on the back hmm? and if you're doing an android application there will be a back button on the back but if you're doing a website, the menu will be on the top. And it's, again, sort of standard for familiarity with people. And then, if you want to read, we are not going to read, there are also principles of interaction design that are all linked here in this page. And this closed the design principle. That was middle ground. Let me say f five minutes on the guidelines, because there is not really a, a lot of say if you want, don't want to read actual all the guidelines so what are the guidelines that's so remember so if you said if theory is the why the principle are the what and the guidelines are the how we did the example yesterday accessibility guideline for the web it's a very specific domain so it's a shared language to promote the consistency in a specific um, domain mm? they are often rule based they are often based on principle and they're often based on best practices and written by expert uh, and sometimes are blessed of standard sometimes are actually uh, standard and they are very, very specific so for instance there is a guideline for styling the web that explain to you um, which is the information architecture, how should you structure a website, etc. And this apply mostly to the website and not to other things. Or there is the web content accessibility guideline, the one that we mentioned the other day. You go on the website and you can see that there is a guideline that say all multimedia content should be available to everybody and how to implement the guideline. If you have an image, you have to have an ALT tag attribute. And if you have a video, the video should have with subtitles. And if you have an audio, you should have different way to, pro to, produce, to give the same content to the audio in, the for in written text, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these guidelines are also prioritized. There are things that are important to do and things that are better to do and things that are not so important to do according to what you are targeting for. So the accessibility of image is extremely important, high priority, but other things are maybe more specific in some specific case and not generally uh, needed. Uh, if you design something for mobile instead, you can, for instance, rely to the US government user experience guidelines. So the US government created a series of guidelines for mobile application especially for mobile application about government. So in the US, if you design a mobile application, you should rely on the guidelines that the government gives you. Again, specific about color, positioning, and maybe also accessibility, but this is just about mobile experience, not web experience or art, other artifacts experience. And the UK has a similar system for the government, not just for mobile, but design system, also for the web. And the Italian government has a similar set of system that should be applied for all public institution website. So municipalities, etc., etc. So these are guidelines that apply to very specific domain, government in a very specific country, Italy, UK, US, for a very specific, for some specific application. Mobile, in that case, web, and mobile in this other case. And this also has some toolkit, so not only the guidelines, also some example on how to apply it. And again, all these are guidelines, very, very specific for a very specific case. Hmm? If you are designing, 
something for the Apple ecosystem, you have the Apple Human Interface Guidelines that tell you how you use things and how buttons should be separated and buttons should be separated by another button by three pixels, five pixels. So very specific information for very specific use case and on mobile, on computer, on virtual reality, etc. Hmm? So this is just a list of guidelines. Clearly we are not, we can go, go look at that, but just to give you an idea, right? These guidelines are very, very specific. Hmm? So if you want to do something that resemble uh, iOS application or a Mac application, you can rely on these also to mimic the behavior, to mimic the appearance, because they provide you explicit guidelines on colors, distances, font, etc. Again, very, very specific. So if you do this for Apple, for Microsoft, it's totally different. And so it's, if you use the Apple design in a Microsoft environment and vice versa, that would be totally unfamiliar with people because they are not used to. And so this unfamiliarity is what will decrease the user experience and the usability of the system because they need to learn how to use, how to recognize the color system, the layout system, etc. And same things for Google. They have their own set of guidelines as is the material design that is different from Microsoft, that is different from Apple. And, but even for very specific use case, like uh, there is anyone here that does the third team? Yes, so for instance, if you are doing the third team, there will be some guidelines for human AI interaction. Hmm? That is, the, the guidelines are done by Microsoft Research, that is Microsoft, but the research part, and they created this toolkit with guidelines and this card that you cannot really see it, but you can see here, in which you have the guideline make clear how well the system can do what it does and help the user understand how often the system might make mistakes with some example in practices. So for instance, here, this is positive because or negative because. These are guidelines, you can take it and apply it to various stages of the development where there is AI in the middle and humans as well, not just AI. So, but this has nothing to do with web specific, specifically or with accessibility. Maybe they are, but the focus here is totally different. It's on AI interacting with people and vice versa. And another example, you're doing something for augmented reality, then there are guidelines, in this case by Apple Design, but not only, you can find also others that give you guidelines for creating successful augmented reality application. So for instance, people should use the entire display. Hmm? So not only a part. And these are specific guidelines you can apply. In this case, not, they don't apply specifically to Apple device, but they are more general, even if they are created by Apple. And these are also a little bit more general than, for instance, these guidelines that are instead more about pixels, color, primary color, secondary colors, variation of fonts, size, etc. So all of these enter into the guidelines. We cannot have a look at them in depth like we, we have done in, for the principle, but they can be applied more easily because they are more focused on a specific domain. So if you are working on the web, on the mobile, mimicking a Google system, a Microsoft system, using AI, using augmented reality, etc., there is probably some guidelines you can apply to use the best practice for, from other people, from some expert in a way, so that your work will be easier and you can start with the right, in the right direction to apply things. So again, guidelines more specific than principle, they derive from principle, but will tell you how to work in a specific field, in a specific domain with precision. And here there are links. Um, if you want to have a look at these guidelines, these are just some, some screenshots uh, in the slides. Um, but this will depend also what you will need for within the course or in general in the rest of your, let's say, life. Okay, so this closed this lecture on principle and guidelines. Have a good evening, night, holiday tomorrow and we will meet again, hopefully, a little bit more, who knows, uh, on Monday 
uh, when we start talking about prototyping. And if you have any question, I'm still here while I unplug. <laughs>